Good evening, everyone. I'm Lakeisha Spletzer, and welcome to Keisha's Talks. This year has been a very busy yet fruitful year for me as an indie author. I've learned many things over the course of 2011. Some of it good, some of it not so helpful, but overall a great learning experience. What I'm finding more so this year than the previous year was how to market myself, which is a very important aspect of indie publishing. Sometimes it takes a little bit of working and maneuvering to find out what actually does best for you as an author and what helps you sell yourself. But first we should get down to basics. What do we mean by marketing? What does it mean for you, the author? And what does it mean for your sales of your books? The first thing you have to realize as an author, whether you're traditionally published, e-published, or indie published, is that you yourself are a brand. A brand is kind of like a trademark. It's who you are. It defines you. It lets people know that when they see that type of book or that title or see a certain kind of picture, that it's you. It represents you in all your entirety. How your brand is presented to the world will define who you are for the rest of your career. Now, of course, you are able to reinvent yourself. Don't worry, that's a good thing. But in the beginning, especially for indie authors, it's kind of hard to figure out what your brand is, who you are, what you want your books to say, what you want, well, yourself to say. And it takes a bit of work, quite a bit, actually. When I first started last year, 2010, when I debuted as an indie author, I had done quite a bit of research on the publishing end, um, also about the ebooks and you know the different formats and everything that went with the writing end of the spectrum. But when it came to marketing, I was just as clueless as probably the next person. Indie publishing has been evolving at a really fast pace. No one can quite tell you what exactly to do because, let's face it, all of us are kind of doing our own thing, trying to get our piece of that pie. But regardless of what you choose to do, make sure you do it wholeheartedly. Make sure you do it with passion. These are the things that will help define you as well. You have to decide what your brand is because your brand determines who you are. Are you a YA author? A children's author? a sci-fi author, fantasy, maybe your romance, or perhaps your erotica, or you could be something to do with history. Regardless of what your genre is, you want to make sure that everything that you put together from your website to your blog to your Facebook and beyond, it all needs to coordinate, it all needs to express that brand, that image of you. Sometimes, for some authors that write multiple genres, which is the case with me, branding is a little bit more difficult. Um, so I try to, for me, myself, when I was getting started, I wanted my website to reflect my variety, my diversity, I should say, variety of writing styles, but diversity as a person. So mine didn't have, I don't know, like a set style to it in the beginning. I fooled around with quite a bit of different things before I finally settled on um, WordPress software to do my blogs, my websites, and everything else because it's kind of, for me, I found at least, one of the easier um, platforms to use. And they have a billion, it feels like, um, plugins that can do pretty much anything and everything that you're looking for. So that's why I chose to do WordPress. Um, there are other blogging softwares. Um, you have a B2 Evolution. You have Blogger, um, which is run by Google. Those are some of the um, major ones that people tend to use when they're setting up their blogs. Um, and there's countless others that you can look up to. You just have to do a Google search. Um, and that's especially for those that are a little more on the tech savvy end and you don't mind installing um, your own hosting um, packaging um, and the platforms. If you 
host with someone else, a lot of times they have provisions where you can use blogging software. You just have to check and see. Uh, if you're not really tech savvy and you yeah, still want to be able to do the blogging or have a website, but you want something that's a tad bit easier, then websites such as angelfire.com, webs.com, weebly.com um, are really good because they're free. They also have options to upgrade, so if you need more space along the way, you can you know bump up the package. Um, a lot of them come with their own versions of blogging software and add-ons. So just kind of check to see which ones fit you and run from there. Some authors have chosen to use Facebook as their main um, way to reach the readers, which that is another way you can do it. Um, you do have options when you're creating the Facebook page, um, not just the main profile, but an actual page. You do have options to um, work with the HTML and the creating, and there's tons of programs out there. Um, one I just found recently is called shortstackapp.com. Um, they allow you to create special pages and tabs within a Facebook page, which I'm still playing around with it, but I'm having fun. Um, it's another way, once again, to reach people. But regardless of what you choose to do, you definitely need to have either a Facebook page, a website, or a blog. If you feel an adventurous and you want to do more than one, go for it. Not a bad idea. But you need to have at least one. Because when readers read your books, most people have access to the internet, whether it's at home, library, work, their phones. Um, they want to know. So when they get finished reading your book, if they like your book, they love your book, want to know more about you, the first thing they're going to do is Google you if you don't have something listed on your books for your website address. They're going to Google you. And wherever you're at on the web will come up. And they're going to go there. They're going to look for information. They want to see if you've written anything else. So it's a good idea as part of your branding to make sure you have a main place that has the most uh, what am I wanting to say? That has most of your information all in one location, central location. There we go. You want a central location where they can find out about you. That's what you want. And hey, they may pick up more books from you. They may contact you. It's a good way to start building relationships with your readers. Because your readers are what make your world go round. Without readers, there's no sales. And without sales, well, you're not making any money. The second thing as an indie author that's important when it comes to making your brand, once again, going back to the social networks, if you do have a blog and or a website, the next thing you would like to do or should have at least is either a Facebook, Twitter, or Goodreads account. I mentioned these three because right now they're the biggest um, social media networks that are out there as well as LinkedIn um, and I'll explain that one a little bit later but those three are like the major major places to go readers love those spots they, they love to tweet they love the Facebook they love the good reads and as an author you should make your presence felt on one of them or all three of them or any combination you want to come up with but regardless of where you decide to position yourself, keep it updated. Goodreads has the option for authors to let Goodreads know that they are the author, first of all, when they create their profile. And then you're allowed to have a special um, dashboard that allows you to keep track of your books, do giveaways, and a lot of other really cool stuff. So Goodreads is a really um, fun place to be on. You can also upload videos. You can run a blog from your Goodreads. Um, there's, I mean, there's so much you can do with it. I, I can't really list it all in one show. So go experiment, find out. It's also just a good place in general if you're a reader to find more books. I mean, it, the recommendation list, the groups that they have. Um, they even have giveaways where you can get advanced copies of books. It's, it's a really good platform to be on. Facebook is great because most people have heard of it, familiar with it, and if they don't have an account, they know somebody that does. 
it's also fun to use Facebook because you can, with them too, as I mentioned before, create a, a page, which is a really good way to separate your personal account from your author account. The great part about having a page is that there's no limit to the number of people that can join it. If you have just a profile, a regular account with them, the limit is 5,000 um, friends. So having the page is a good idea because it allows you to build your readership, build your uh, reader base, and there's no limit to the number of people that can like your page. So it's a good idea to use it. Twitter. Twitter is great for the writer who doesn't think they have a lot to say or can say a lot in 140 characters or less. Twitter is great because you can throw out tweets and people can retweet and can spread your message all over the world. Um, let's say you want to do a giveaway. You put out a tweet. Hey, you're giving away a copy of whatever the title may be. I can guarantee you, you'll have a bunch of people stopping by to go see what's going on and checking out your website. Once again, building readership. You're getting exposure. It's a great way to bring people to you. Now, of course you have to be following some people to gain people, but in the end, it's still worth it. So, that covers the first part a little bit about um, branding. Oh, I almost forgot about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is another um, good social media site. It's more of, I like to refer to it as more of the professional site. You have a lot more professionals that use LinkedIn um, compared to, you know, just everyday people. It's still a good way to network um, and they have just as many groups and activities. The beautiful part about using the various social media networks is that you can cross link accounts. Uh, Facebook, you know, you can face, sign in with Facebook anywhere pretty much anymore. Um, same thing with Twitter. Um, LinkedIn allows you to link back to those two. Um, Goodreads as well has the option to link using the various accounts. So I strongly urge you and suggest to you that if you do have the various accounts, link them together. Um, it helps also when you're posting. If you post in one, it will post in all of them, um, which saves you time and skipping about <laughs> to the various sites. All right, this part of the marketing video is talking about, well, we shall discuss, I should say, blog tours and blog hops. Now, I have to admit that the blog hops was something I knew probably the least about in the beginning. Um, and I participated in some in 2010. Kind of sat back and, you know, watched to see what they were doing and made sure I followed the rules and, you know, participated. I didn't host any. And then this year for 2011, I stumbled across a rather wonderful website called I'm a Reader, Not a Writer. And they host, I, wow, I lost count. I mean, there's a lot of blog hops that they do. Now, the main question I need to answer for you is, what is a blog hop? Simply put, a blog hop is an event where bloggers, reviewers, and in this case, re uh, writers, <laughs> join together to um, have people click on their links to the individual websites and be entered for a chance to win some type of prize or prizes. Okay. Now, um, the person that's coordinating, in this case, I am a reader, not a writer, she uses um, something called Linky, L-I-N-K-Y, tools. And what that is, basically, we go in, we register, and it, it gathers all the links for her, and we are given a simple code to pay, um, put in your blog post. Um, and then that one little line of code will make everyone's list of links to all the websites that are participating in blogs that are participating show up. And so it's really rather simple. And they the rules are not that hard to follow. Sometimes they tell you that all that you have to do is to enter is leave a comment. Some of them you can get extra entries. Um, it varies from blog hop to blog hop and depends upon what theme that they're running. It's a great, great way to be seen. I have found, 
and this is in my case okay like I said results may vary okay but in my case I found that I've seen a surge in um, the people on Goodreads that add my novels to their list I see more uh, purchases and I tend to gain a lot more people on my Facebook and my Twitter um, which is a good thing because maybe I've written something right now that may not appeal to them doesn't mean I won't write something in the future that they might not find exciting and hey I want to read it blog hops are great too because they allow you to network a lot of review sites and I'm doing book review sites participate in the blog hops it's a great way for you as well to go visit these sites to see what their review policies are and to get your books into the hands of bloggers nothing helps better than a great review word of mouth is awesome so by all means utilize it the other thing I mentioned in this segment is blog tours now when I first heard about a blog tour it was back in 2010 and I was thinking blog tour what do you mean a blog tour never heard of that before in my entire life blog tours or virtual tours are the same as actual book tours the only difference you're doing it online and you're visiting different blogs that's it the best part about doing the blog tours is once again reach you're reaching readers that may not have heard of you as an indie author our pocketbooks are not so deep so we have to do the best we can with what we're given blog tours are awesome once you get them set up because you're going to be visiting the different blogs and or review sites in some cases um, a lot of them do interviews some of them ask that you do a giveaway of you know one or more of your books you have to work with them you have to figure out what you want to do I had fun I put my own together this year um, to promote Moonbeams and Weird Love Midnight Revelations. I did a kind of a dual tour for uh, both of the books and I put it together and I had it last for four weeks. I had a blast and the response was great. I loved working with the bloggers. Um, I loved meeting the new readers that stopped by. Make sure as well when you do a blog tour, especially on ones where you do an interview or they're doing a giveaway, that you go back during your yeah, no, during the tour and leave comments, okay? Um, because there's nothing worse to a reader, and I can say this from personal experience, that if you're participating in a, a giveaway or an interview where they ask you to ask questions or leave comments, and you go back and you're like, oh, let's go see if, you know, if they answered my question, and you go back and there's no answer. So if you do a blog tour, please don't forget to um, pay attention to your readers and go back and make sure you leave comments and keep up with it during the tour okay that's once again this is about building your readership you don't want to lose readers you want to gain them so make sure you give them that service go that extra mile okay but the blog tours are great you can do them by yourself you can partner up some tours I've seen they've had five or six authors get in together um, and they do the whole circuit and then they offer a, a big huge prize at the end which those are always fun to do some people do web hunts and that's another way for authors especially groups of, of authors to get together and one of the best examples of web hunts that I've seen is done by Night Owl um, reviews like right now they're currently doing a web hunt that I think ends I think it's January 15th but they have I think uh, over a hundred authors and websites participating and you're going to the different sites and you're looking for certain things and it's you can go check it out on the night owl review website uh, get the details and go have fun but once again all of these things are designed to bring you readers they're designed to give you exposure exposure is what we all need because if you're sitting in the corner praying that you're going to get readers but you're not doing anything to get readers money is not going to rain down from heaven okay readers are not going to fall from the sky you've got to be proactive how active you are depends on the author some people want to go all out some want to take their time no matter what pacing you choose to do keep track see what works see what doesn't work 
ask around. Partner up. Share the love. You never know where you'll go unless you try. The third area of marketing that I would like to touch on is talk shows and vlogs. Now, talk shows. My first year out as a new indie writer, I had the great honor of being on the talk show with Cyrus Webb. Um, it's called Conversations with Cyrus and it's a blog talk radio show. Cyrus was a great host. I was totally freaked out by the way when I did it. But with the internet um, radio, internet talk shows, people can hear you no matter where they are in the world. All that's required is that they go to the blog talk radio website, go to that particular show's homepage, and listen in. Turn on their speakers or listen through their headsets and they can follow you as you have your interview. Blog Talk Radio was where I initially started with the talk shows, um, internet talk shows. I did it for a little bit with Blog Talk Radio and then I discovered another internet radio um, site called Talk Shoe, which is where I'm currently hosting my shows from. Okay, time for a little shameless plug here. I currently am hosting a show called The Indie Author How To and I am looking for you. Yes, indie authors, we are looking in the 2012 year to have you as guest on our talk show. If you're interested, check out the link below. It is indieauthor-howto.blogspot.com. I know it's a little bit long, but it, once again, the link is below me, and it's also in the little box that explains what the video is about. So please um, go visit the website and get in contact with us. Myself, my co-host, we would love to hear from you and we'd love to have you on the show as well as help you reach out and uh, do a little promotion, right? But the beautiful part about the talk shows is that you got listeners all over the place and it's a great place to reach them. Vlogs are great to do if you're not shy. Now, if you're watching this video, you're watching a vlog. Simply put, vlog stands for video log. I like to do my Keisha's talks about different topics. You can talk about your books. You can talk about the writing industry. You can talk about yourself as a writer. You choose what you want to do with your vlog. I try to post at least one video a month. In the beginning I was doing uh, a little bit more and now that I've been writing and trying to get some books out I've kind of slowed down a little bit. But my goal is to definitely put out at least one video vlog a month. One vlog. At least one. I could do more it's great but at least one um, vlogs are great for providing information it also allows people to get a taste of your personality so if you don't have a problem sitting in front of a camera like I'm doing right now talking to thin air because there's no one up here but me right now um, you will do just fine and uh, with doing a vlog um, I also take my camera with me and I try to record events that I'm at so that um, I can share them with others. Uh, so hopefully it works. <laughs> uh, now I've kind of lost my train of thought, but that's another part of being recording and having fun. I swear I'm going to do outtakes one day. You guys will die laughing when you see this. But, um, you know, vlogs are great. They really are. And you just talk. You know, sometimes you have to do it more than once. <laughs> but regardless of how long it takes you, just take your time, record it. You have um, freeware software out there to do the editing with. I tend to, if you have a Windows operating system on your computer, I don't know what it is for the Macs, but if you have a Windows, there is a program called Movie Maker, and you simply uh, pull your video footage and go into the program and you can edit and do all kinds of cool effects and all that other great stuff with it. Um, but regardless of what you decide to do, you know, get you a YouTube account, create you a vlog show if you're not shy and have at it. If you are shy, it might not be such a bad deal to try a vlog. That way you can get used to speaking and having people look at you. <laughs> it's kind of strange, but... You know, it, it, it works. It works. 
I hope that some of these marketing tips I've given you to will help you to be able to get out there and be seen. Um, there's so much more that can go with marketing. I mean, I just barely scratched the surface. But those are the kind of the major things that I've done um, and that I tell people when they ask me, you know, how do you market? How do you market? How do you market? That's how I market. So if you want to attempt any of those, be my guest. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact me. My website is listed right below me um, as well. I look forward to hearing your success stories. And good night.